Allah makes our deen easy and beautiful, we make our deen difficult and ugly. We make people feel bad because they're not perfect. We make people feel bad because they're not completely there yet. The Sahaba were the best generation, yes or no? Best generation of all time. Of all time. And these people were willing to die for Islam, yes or no? Okay, Allah gave them ayat about alcohol in three stages. These are people that are willing to die for Islam. And Allah said, لا تقرب, you know, إثبهما أكبر من نفعهما. The evil in alcohol is greater than the benefit. The evil is more. Then that wasn't enough. Then later on He said, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْتُمْ سُكَارًا حَتَّى تَعْلَمُ مَا تَقُولُونَ Don't go near salah while you're drunk. And then finally, one of the last surahs ever revealed, Surah Al-Ma'idah, one of the last surahs ever revealed, He says, رِجْسٌ مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ This is evil from the work of the devil. Will you stop or what? In other words, Sahaba who were the best generation, Allah did not expect them to quit alcohol immediately. If He, could, if he wanted, He could have given the ayah from the very beginning. Now think about this even further. Alcohol is considered not just haram, it's also considered evil. There's a difference. Pigs are not evil. Pigs are just what? Haram. You don't see a pig and say, Astaghfirullah, evil shaitan. No, it's just a pig. Just don't eat it. Okay, it's a, a pig. Is, Allah made it. It's not evil. Relax. <laughs> okay? But alcohol is not just haram, it is also what? Evil. Which means it was always evil. Which means it was always from the work of the shaitan. When the, in the first year of revelation, it was from the work of shaitan. And in the 23rd year of revelation, it was also the work of shaitan. And even though it was always evil, Allah decided that people, have to, people haven't made enough progress on the road yet. So they're not ready yet. So we'll, I'll give them the ayah when they're a little more ready. So I'll give them a little bit. And I'll tell them, look, the harm is more than the benefit. Then a little bit later I'll say, at least don't be drunk when you're making salah. And a little bit later I'll tell them, okay, leave it now. You're mature enough. Now stop. The best generation, Allah allowed them time to make progress on the road. And what do we do? If a drunk guy, drunk guy, walked into the masjid today, he's had two, three beers, you can smell it from 10 feet away, and he, uh, I want to pray. What are we going to do with him? We're going to beat him up and kick him out. And once you kick him out, where is he going to go? Back to the bar. He's going to go back to drinking. He came to the house of Allah. He took a step. He took such a big step. And you said, go back, this step is not good enough for us. You're not good enough for us. Allah wants you to make progress on the road. And you have to let other people make progress on the road. And maybe some of them will take their time and some of them will move quickly. You know, Allah gave the example of, a, of, a, of growing things on the ground, right? There's a farmer. And by the way, some of you have these so many. I think maybe in the last year, this question was repeated at least 1,000 times in my lectures. People came to me at least 1,000 times and asked this one question. Let me tell you what the question is. Brother, my husband doesn't pray. My son doesn't pray. My wife doesn't pray. My sister doesn't pray. My uncle doesn't pray. My father doesn't pray. How do I get them to pray? How do I change them? Tell me one thing I can say to them and they'll change. And I say, okay, hold on. I got nothing. There's a farmer, a farm, what's step one in farming? You put the seed in the ground, yes? You put the seed in, then you put water. Then you go to sleep. Then you wake up. Make sure the soil is clean. Then you put water again. Then you go to sleep. You wake up, you put water again, remove the insects, make dua, Ya Allah, take care of this plant. Does the farmer see any progress? Yes or no? He sees no progress. All the things that are happening are happening under the ground. The farmer doesn't see. If there was one thing I could do, it could just change right now and turn into a tree. Let me dig it up, take the seed on, make a tree out of it. Does it work like that? Allah compared the Qur'an coming down to water coming down. And when water comes down, the, the life on the earth grows immediately or grows over time? 
It grows over time. When the Qur'an will enter somebody's heart, they will change immediately or change over time? They will change over time. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq changed immediately. But so many Sahaba changed over time. Umar bin al-Khattab, five years. It took some time. Abu Sufyan, many more years. It took a lot of time. It doesn't happen overnight. People only quote the example of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. By the way, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq is an extremely amazing example. Even for the Sahaba, he's too high of an example. What about you? People quote the greatest example and make you feel bad. There are so many other Sahaba, hundreds of thousands of them, radiallahu anhum wa radu anhu, that did not transform the same way as Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They took their time and Allah is happy with them too. Allah is happy with them too. Call people with wisdom. Let them grow. Let them listen. Let them listen. I was giving a lecture in England. When I finished my lecture, a woman came up to me and said, please don't tell anyone, I'm Shia. I've been listening to your lectures for a year. It's really helped me a lot. Please don't tell anyone. You know why? Because it's Birmingham, England. Whew, that place is crazy. You know? Other guy comes up to me, brother, uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, this is my wife, myself, and there's about 50 of our friends. We are from the Baha'i religion. We are, we've been listening to your lectures for a long time. Please don't tell anyone. I'm like, yeah, welcome. Asalaamu Alaikum, sit, relax. I don't need to go after and start having debates with the Shia person or the Baha'i person or any other person for that matter. Why? Because my only concern is to get the water to the heart. That's all. The rest, who will do? The rest, Allah will do that. You're not going to do that. that will, Allah will do that. That's up to Allah what He does. That's not up to me. We don't give people a chance. We're too busy arguing with them and debating with them and pushing them further away from Islam. This is not wisdom. This is just not wisdom. Call people to the path of your Rabb using wisdom. Bil Hikmah. 